Hi guys, it's Sarissa with Immerse Photography and I am so glad that you found this video. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to give you some little quick tips and pointers and helpful hints to help you find your way around Lightroom. Um, I think Adobe Lightroom is one of the best photography programs out there, um, not just for pro photographers but for even soccer moms or amateur photographers at home. It's a wonderful program but it can be a little bit daunting when you first start using it. So I'm just going to walk you through some basic things to help you get started. So the first First thing that we're going to do is we're going to import our photos so that we can actually work on them. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to click the import button. I'm going to select where I want my photos to come from. So right now I've got a whole bunch of images just sitting on my desktop. I tend to be really great with getting my client pictures out quickly, but my personal pictures are very neglected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open these images and I'm going to come down here to uncheck all because I don't want to bring them all in. I just want to work on a small series of photos right now. So I love having behind the scenes pictures from my photo shoots. I feel like it gives people, you know, kind of a, an insight into what happens behind the camera. So I'm going to be working on a series of behind the scenes photos. So I'm going to select this first one and you'll notice that I didn't click on necessarily the picture or this little box. I clicked on the white area around it or the gray area around it. So I'm going to click on this first one and I want this whole row all the way down to this picture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the shift button and I'm going to click this gray area as well and you'll see that the whole row was selected. Once I've done that I'm going to click on one of the pictures, does not matter which one, I'm going to click on the box and that's going to give me a check mark in each of those boxes. And if I look down here in the corner, you'll see now that there are 13 photos selected. And right now there are 24 megabytes worth of photos. Usually an import for me is more like a couple hundred or thousand. But right now we're just going to be working with these 13 photos. So now I'm going to come over here to keywords. And I've already set up where I'm going to have my backup copies go, where I'm going to have my files go. So if you've not already done that and set up kind of your, your basic of workflow, you might want to do a little bit more research and get that set up before we're moving on to this next step. So once I have that set up, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some keywords on these photos. So I'm going to put immerse photography because that's who I am. Um, I'm going to call these behind the scenes. You'll see I've used that keyword before. And then I'm going to label these summer of 2014 just so I know kind of when they were taken. If this was a client, I would actually put, you know, August 2014 or even the specific date. For me right now, just because they're for me, I'm going to put summer 2014. And then I'm going to come in, I'm going to import these photos. Now what's going to happen is it's going to bring them in and you can see the status bar in the upper left hand corner and it's going to throw them into my Lightroom catalog. Now right now you can still see a whole bunch of other images on my screen. I have it set up so that it does not pop up to the most recent import because sometimes I'm working on other projects. You might have it set up so that it goes to the most recent import and in that case your pictures that you just brought in would be shown right here on your screen. Now let's say that you do have it set up so that you're looking at all of your photographs. Right now I've got almost 1300 on here and it can be kind of hard to find the photos that you're looking for. So here's where the keywords come into play. Up here where it says library, I want to be on this library mode. Then I'm going to come over here to where it says text. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in behind the scenes and immediately what that's going to do is it's going to pop up all the photos that I've labeled behind the scenes. And you can see there's the ones that I just brought in and some older ones as well. So I'm going to say behind the scenes and then I'm going to type in, I'm going to refine my search to summer 2014. And there's those photos that I just brought in or I just imported. So now that I've decided that these are the photos I'm going to be working with, now I need to start developing them. So I'm going to come up here to the develop mode. I'm going to show you some of my favorite things to work with. Now, um, I can use my scroll bar to kind of go back and forth to look at my images, but what I like to do is I like to flag them. So for this case, I'm going to come through and here are your flags right down here. I'm going to come through and I'm going to highlight the photos that I want to work on. So these are from, oh, that's a great picture. These are some behind the scenes photos from a recent wedding that I shot. So I'm going to flag the ones that I'm going to work on. So I'm going to flag this one. And I like that one. My uncle took these for me as I was shooting the wedding. And we're going to say just for fun, this one and this one. Now, once I've flagged the photos I like, I'm going to ignore all the other photos. I'm not going to delete them or give them a black flag. I'm just going to give the good flags to the ones that I like. I find for me mentally, that helps me just work a lot faster. So now that I've, once I've flagged those photos, I'm going to come over here to where it says filter. And I'm going to click flagged. 
And now what is going to pop up, it's just going to pop up those five photos that I flagged. So I'm going to start with this one right here. And the first thing that I'm going to look at in my develop mode is I'm going to look at the exposure. Right now, immediate glance at this, this photo looks way too dark to me. So I'm going to bring my exposure up so that it's properly exposed. I like mine to be pretty bright, so I'm going to stay right about there. And then I'm gonna look at the whites and the blacks. Um, you never wanna have your whites or your blacks without detail. So if I look at this wedding dress right here, it's kind of starting to lose some details. So I might wanna play with either my highlights, that will make them brighter, and that's way too bright because you can't see any details. And this will bring them down, and that makes her dress look a little bit too blue for me. So I'm gonna kind of go somewhere in between here. I wanna make sure I see some details. And you could also experiment with the white. Um, I'm gonna leave mine alone for right now, leave it back at that zero, zero mark. Um, the next thing I'm gonna look at is the blacks, especially if I'm doing a wedding. I, I like to have some nice deep true black, so I'm gonna drop my blacks in a little bit more. Just give the picture a little bit more definement. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at the temperature of my photo. Now, I typically shoot in camera raw. This was just a behind the scenes photo given to me by someone else, so it's a JPEG image. So when I look at my temperature up here, I'm not gonna see the exact Kelvin degrees that this photo was shot with, but I am gonna see a temperature slider. So I can make it warmer or I can make it cooler than it is right now. Now, I personally like my photos to be a little warmer. Um, it was a nice sunshine, glowy day, so I'd like to make mine pretty warm. You might like yours more on the cool side. There's not a right or the wrong. It's just a personal preference. So I'm gonna warm mine up a little bit. And then the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna look at sharpening. I like my photos to be nice and crisp and in focus. So I'm gonna bump my sharpening up and this is just gonna bring the edges of my subjects a little bit clearer into my photo. So if you look really close, watch the bride's flowers here. If I bring the sharpening and turn it completely down to zero, you can see it's a little fuzzier. Whereas if I turn it up all the way, they're gonna be incredibly sharp. Now, I think that looks a little bit too artificial for my taste, so I'm gonna bring it down. I like mine to be about the 40 to 60 range is typically where I like to be. And I'm gonna say that I like that right there. Now, once I've done that, I'm gonna come back through and I'm gonna give it another glance. I feel like I need to crop the photo a lot more. There's a lot of um, empty, wasted space, so I'm gonna come back to the top. Here's my crop tool and I'm gonna hold down the shift button. If I don't hold the shift button, it's gonna change the size of my photo and do all kinds of weird things, which I don't want. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold down the shift key as I drag this, and it's gonna keep the same ratio of my photograph. And then I can change exactly how it's cropped on my screen. Now once I've done that, I'm gonna hit the done button. Now, if I'm looking down here, I'm gonna say that I'm perfectly in love with this photograph. I might tweak it a little bit, I, think I want it to be a touch warmer, and I think I want to bring in a little bit more detail in our dress. So we're going to say that I love it right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to my next photograph. Now I could come to this photograph of me and my husband. Um, I could come to this photograph and I could do all of those changes, or what I could do is I could click on this photo and then hold down the command button on my Mac, and I can click sync. And what that's going to do is it's going to ask me, do I want to use all these settings? And I'm going to click yes. So I'm going to do synchronize. And you'll see down here, this photo changed. So it matched this photo right here. So if we look, here's the before on that photo. Here's the after. And all the changes that I applied to this photo, it just applied to this one. Now, let's say that I want to take these changes and I want to put them on this photo. Now, this photo looks a little bit different to me. So we're going to see how this works. I'm going to again, click on this photo hold down command, click on this photo, and I'm gonna sync those two. And once I've done that, this one is going to change to match this one. But again, if I look at this photo, the greens look a little bit too weird, so I might come in here, I might change my greens, I might cool it down till I like the way that looks. Now, I'm obviously not finished, but I'm gonna pretend that I am, I'm gonna show you how to export them now. So once I have all of these photos edited the way that I wanted them, I'm going to do Control or Command a, that's going to select all of them. There's other ways that you can do that. That's just what I like to do. And then I'm going to come back to the library mode. This is going to allow me to export these images because I can change them all I want, but until I export them, those changes are not saved into a new file that another program can read. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click export. And then I'm going, to tell, I'm going to tell my computer where I want him to go. So I actually have a folder for behind the scenes photos. I'm going to put the date on here. So for these, I'm just going to say 2014. 
08, 09, I think was that wedding date. And then I can change the size of my photos um, upon exporting. I can add a watermark if I want, um, and I can sharpen them. I'm gonna take the watermark off since I actually did not take these photos and in them. So I'm gonna take my watermark off, and then I'm gonna click the Export button. And oh, I already have something with those names. So I'm just, I can either overwrite them or I can use unique names. In this case, I'm just gonna use unique names. And you'll see up here is my export box and this will tell me when my export is finished. Once I've done that, I can close down my Lightroom screen, open the files and I can use them however I want. I hope you found this video helpful. If it did, on the lower left-hand side of your screen, you're gonna see a thumbs up. Definitely click on that thumbs up. That lets me know exactly what kind of video content you guys like. And then on the bottom right side, there's a follow button or a subscribe button. I would love it if you subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can see more user-friendly and accessible beginning photography videos. I hope you have a great day. I can't wait to see some of the photos that you take, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.